operations as far as observing Jupiter is concerned for about 45 minutes and then we come back out on the other side and we do this can just continually now the bad thing is that if if we happen to be behind the earth when something interesting is happening there there's nothing we can do about it but uh, you know we'll just have to wait wait our turn until it comes back out again and, and uh, uh, can observe it again for example we get even when Hubble does get a clear view it'll be quite some time before we'll be able to see anything uh, we get the science data through the data uh, from the data capture facility. It comes up here, it goes through DP, uh, DE, GC, CA, um, and then to output products, um, where the GO can then uh, get the FITS tapes that we generate. Through the night, a nearby hotel has been doing brisk business receiving scientists and reporters, as well as eager Comet fans from all over America. This is Jupiter, and these are the Comets coming in. And what we're going to do is we're trying to get an elementary, high school and middle school program, and we're going to be integrating it into our school system. And we're going to be, oh, it's wonderful. I'm so excited. <laughs> We've been waiting all week to come. And so when we flew here, we went over this morning, but we're supposed to take shifts during the day. We're going to have three eight-hour shifts, and we're going to be watching the impact and taking notes, and we're doing videotape. Second only to the comet's anticipated star performance is the presence of its discoverers, Jean and Carolyn Shoemaker. For moral support, their daughter Linda and her husband Fred have joined them for what they expect to be a highly emotional day. <laughs> I, I'll feel a little sad. The, the, the last night of our observing run, we put the guide scope of the telescope on Jupiter and I took a good look. I wanted to see what Jupiter looked like before impact. <laughs> uh, it's not a very good scope for seeing a lot of detail. I could see one band of, in the atmosphere and a couple of the moons below. And it looked lovely. And I tried hard to see the comet. I wanted one last look, but I couldn't see the comet. <laughs> but um, I'll, I'll feel a little sad that, that an image that I carry in my mind, which is so beautiful of this comet, is going to start disappearing on me. On the other hand, I'm excited. I hope there are a lot of fireworks or a lot of things to be seen. <laughs> the observation strategy has been planned in minute detail. All 21 fragments have been given names and allocated to a different scientist. The first fragment, A, due to crash in six hours, belongs to Heidi Hamill. Everything's going very well. We are doing all our pre-impact calibration work and getting things set up, we have a data pipeline so that as the images come down, we can calibrate them right away and remove all the cosmetic problems that you have with any kind of camera. So we're all set. We're ready to roll. We're just hoping the comet puts on a show for us. CNN? Yes, with Miles O'Brien. Hi. CNN. Hi, Kate. How are you? Miles O'Brien, who interviewed you last weekend, is right. said, yeah, we're doing live shots all through the afternoon, and we'd love to have you at 1 o'clock. Where, where would that be? <laughs> right, right there. Door. Right well, in there. Yes. Okay. Great. Thank you so all right. much. We really appreciate it. Okay. So 1 o'clock, I should come down, just meet you? All right. Caroline, okay. too? Or how, how yes. do you want to do that? Yes. Okay. Bye. Okay. So the moment of truth, huh? <laughs> Good to see you. The Hubble Nerve Center. Later tonight, this room will be packed with a campaign team eagerly awaiting the arrival of the first images. It will be four hours after impact before the data is processed and the image scrolls up on these screens. Meanwhile, the team will be effectively blind, while ground-based telescopes have immediate access to the event. A four-hour delay is a small price to pay for Hubble's superior vision, 
but the observatory's sophistication could prove far more costly. Hubble, uh, being a very complex observatory, uh, sometimes goes into what we call a safe mode. Uh, you know, there might be a cosmic ray event that occurs in one of its detectors or in one of its, uh, you know, in its computer memory that causes it to think that something's wrong when it actually it's only a transient event. And it could go into hibernation. It could go into hibernation for a couple of days. If this happens during the impact week, uh, we're all going to be crying. Right, all covers off. Two hours to impact, and English amateurs at Crayford prepare for a test run. Can I come by? Yep. I'll uh, get it in there. Find them now. Okay. Anything on the on the screen? Um, it's just a little bit to one side. That's spot on, John. Right. Look on. Right. That was good, wasn't it? Because yeah. we've got the mark on there anyway, so it helped a lot. And. Um, I'll save that one. That looks as if that looks as if it might yeah, well be okay. okay. <laughs> <laughs> There's a stream of those giant space rocks that will strike repeated blows to the planet's surface. They'll kick up phenomenal mushroom-like clouds of debris. And those waves of soil and rock will end up <laughs> blanketing the atmosphere. <laughs> mm -hmm. What is wrong with these people? Oh, some, some guy gets paid to go out and cook up this stuff. I mean, it's incredible. It's just incredible. Um, excited, nervous. Everybody's working hard, busy, tired. Impact in how long? Um, it's 4 o'clock. 15 minutes? T minus 15. Okay, here we go. Yeah. Okay, it's going more. going for a couple I'm more. <clears throat> seems to be coming up very cloudy over there. Ah. I'm afraid that um, we're not going to see Jupiter in more than another five minutes, and I'm afraid we won't see it when the events start. Well, no. It's climbing down very heavily now. High above the clouds, Hubble swings into position. Its focus set on Jupiter. It's coming up in about four minutes. Uh, oh, there's still about a seven-minute uncertainty. It's one sigma. <laughs> Somebody's going to, if there's a if there's a flare coming up, I think there'll be a burst, radio burst. It's going to be our best way to get the timing, I suspect. So hopefully. Ulysses is Riding there, high on the wave of publicity surrounding this event and timing his arrival to coincide with the impact detectors. is the co-discoverer of Comet Shoemaker-Levy. he is, the man of the hour, <laughs> the cover boy. How are you doing? <laughs> hey, <John. laughs> Hey, you're looking great. <laughs> <laughs> Have you seen it? Uh, um, that's not me. That's somebody else. They got a stand-in. So. Oh, your twin brother. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. My okay. evil twin. <laughs> yeah. Peter is here. Have you seen Peter's Peter? here, and yeah. my mother is here. Oh my gosh! Is she? Where is she? There she is. She's around here. Hi. How are you? <laughs> I'm Great fine. to have you here. It's a wonderful picture. Of don't, guys don't, in don't, don't you love that, oh, though? <laughs> this is just okay. nothing. Okay. How do you feel just now? What? Well, uh, let's say expectant. You know, we're hoping that we're going to see a lot, but but there's always been the chance that we'll see very little. So. You know, this is sort of the moment of truth now. And uh, what will happen is that when the fragments hit the far side of Jupiter, Jupiter will then rotate, and uh, the site where they hit uh, will come into view in about 20 minutes after the actual uh, moment of impact. So we'll get a look at it that way. Another possibility is that a fireball could be sent up uh, after the, uh, uh, the impact. That would rise above uh, uh, the clouds which uh, shroud Jupiter, and it would therefore be visible uh, to scientists. <laughs> It's something I've dreamed about most of my professional career, that I would actually have the chance to witness the impact 
of a comet or an asteroid on a planet. And it's happening now.